Howdy, this is Tubal Kane once again, and this morning I want to talk to you a little bit about the machinability of steel. And the term machinability refers to the ease with which uh, metal can be machined to an acceptable finish. And some of you may not even be aware that some uh, steels machine so much easier than others, although I'm sure if you've done much machining at all, you know that some uh, steels are very tough and you almost give up on them or you blame it on your tool or the way you ground your tool. But uh, in industry, in mass production, if at all possible, depending on the specifications, they try to use free machining steel, other than of course when it's going to be heat treated or it needs great toughness or something like that. But if you have never used 12L14 steel, also called Lead Loy 300 by uh, the Ryerson Steel Company, uh, you'll think you uh, died and went to heaven when you use this. Now this 1018 is just common cold roll steel. And uh, this is three quarter inch hot rolled here. It always has a bluish or a blackish scale on it. It is not uh, easily machined and here is a piece of tool steel. In this case it's one inch drill rod. All steel companies have a stock list. This is a very, very old one. Matter of fact, it's from the, the 70s. But you can find a lot of specifications about steel uh, in here. Uh, I know you're probably not going to order any, but the, the steel that you buy at the hardware store in that handy rack is never easy to machine. You're not even sure exactly what it is, but I think it's some kind of cold roll steel. But it, it's fine for making projects where you fabricate or weld, but it just doesn't... Uh, machine very well at all, including threading or, or trying to tap it or, or run a die over it. All steels have a machinability rating and it was based on uh, the American Iron and Steel Institute's uh, research and so on when they arbitrarily assigned uh, a number 100 or 100 percent to a steel called uh, B1112 and the B used to stand for Bessemer. I'm not sure if that steel is still available but that was the basis on it so uh, that was pretty free machining at a 100 rating so if it's anything higher than 100 it is excellent if it's any lower it starts to degrade in uh, machinability and uh, the finish that you'll get there are several ingredients in the steel that uh, improve its machinability and uh, Number one is sulfur, so you've heard of sulfurized steels. And uh, number two is lead, and the lead loy contains lead, and that's what makes it uh, easier to machine. But uh, it, it gets a lot of criticism because we think of lead as dangerous. So uh, now we have a, a tin-based uh, screw machine stock, and it would be called 12T14. It's more expensive because tin costs more than lead and it is said to be unpopular because once that gets back into the scrap system and into the furnaces again it, it contaminates and it's hard to get the uh, tin out of it. At least that's what I have read about it. This is a page out of the Ryerson book called uh, Mechanical Properties of Steel and this information can be found on the internet and in uh, uh, probably machinery's handbook and places like that but for instance here let's take a look at uh, lead loy 300 which is 12 L 14 and it gives us various characteristics here but in the last column here is machinability and it has a machinability of 180 so it machines quite a bit better than that uh, uh, B 11 uh, 12 that I told you about a little bit earlier so in the last column here is the machinability of steel. So look that up if you're interested in such a thing. Now here's a list of uh, the machinability ratings on the four pieces of steel that are sitting here on the bench. And the 12L14 has a rating of 180. The uh, cold roll 1018 only 65. The hot roll 50 and the drill rod much harder to machine at 40. Again, there are so many, many alloys, but these are the ones that I use the most often, and I have them in stock here so that we can uh, uh, talk about them. But, uh, and these are going to be what you run into most often, but 
when you buy steel or you come upon it at an auction or a sale or, or it's scrap steel, you really do not know what it is. And there isn't any good way to find out other than the spark test or some other kind of chemical analysis. So when you get a hold of, of steel, if you pay good money for it, make sure that you mark it as such so that you know what it is. Now, uh, I used to, at the high school, always paint the uh, lead loy purple because that was the color code they used on the end of it. But that might have been Ryerson's uh, uh, color code. And the 1018 was always green. But very quickly, the kids would uh, mess the seal up so you didn't know what you had. So I used to paint a purple all the way down one side. It took a lot of time to do that. But then over the years, I knew exactly what it was. What is the disadvantage of the lead loy? It is not... Uh, weldable and it gets a light rust on it much more quickly than the, the regular cold rolled steel. Now what I propose to do for this most unscientific test and demonstration that I'm going to do is to uh, put the steel into the closing lathe and at uh, a cutting speed of about 150 or so which is going to be for the one inch diameter approximately uh, between 5 and 600 uh, RPM, but that'll give me the, the cutting speed that I, that I want. I'm going to use cutting oil and I'm going to take a, a, a cut on each piece in a three jaw chuck, taking off, well I haven't decided how much yet, but and then we'll take a look at the chips and we'll take a look at the finish. And we'll start out by taking a roughing cut. Now you never do care what the finish is like for a roughing cut, so don't waste your time trying to get a good finish when you're taking off a lot and feeding fast, because it doesn't matter. The only time that it really matters is uh, the final pass when you're taking it down to dimension. And even then sometimes it does, your surface uh, finish doesn't matter uh, if it's going to be the point of a tent stake you're going to drive in the ground. It just doesn't matter. But on uh, some other projects you want a very good finish and I don't mean by uh, taking a file to it and then polishing it with uh, emery cloth. I, I mean the final finish that is uh, produced by the cutting tool and I'm going to use a carbide tool for this. This is the 1018 steel 4,000 speed, 50,000th depth, 600 RPM with some cutting oil. This is the Ledloy 300 that is 12L14 steel. It really could be run at a much faster speed than this, but I want to keep it the same for all. You can see that the chips are quite a bit different. They're not long and stringy anymore.
this is the high carbon tool steel drill rod. speed up just a little bit to about 750 because this is smaller diameter and that gives us about the same cutting feet per minute. This is the rough and cut. It looks like we're at a picnic, but I'm serving up uh, plates of chips. And these are the chips that came from the 1018. Notice that they're long and stringy. Now the thicker chips were the roughing cut and the, uh, the small ones from the, the finishing cut. But you'll notice a difference in the chip formation on the different kinds of steel. Now for the 12L14 and by the way, that's about 0.15 to 0.30 percent lead. And the lead lubricates. That's the whole principle of what the lead does. Very small chips. Which sometimes is a blessing because long curly chips flapping around and wrapping around your work are very annoying. But that's more like what the chips are going to look like when you use a leaded steel. Now here's the drill rod, high carbon tool steel, and we're back to long stringy chips. Perhaps I should have taken uh, deeper, more aggressive cuts for this demonstration. And then when we get into the hot rolled, again, not quite as stringy as what I'm used to with deeper cuts. So the chip formation is different, and of course that's going to vary with the type of tool you use too, the cutting tool. In this case it was a nice sharp carbide, brand new. And here's the finished uh, machined samples. Top is the 1018, then the lead loy, then the tool steel, and then the uh, hot rolled. And surprisingly not as big a difference as I would have thought but with the deeper cuts you're probably going to notice more of a difference and I wish I had a magnifying lens to really blow that up and then you would see I think some difference and there's uh, using my thumbnail quite a difference on the tool seal that's very very rough and again It was a uh, 4 thousandths feed, which is a fine feed, and the depth of 50 thousandths for the roughing and another 10 thousandths for the finishing, and 600 RPM, except for the hot rolled, was 700 RPM. So buy yourself some of that 4L14 steel. You're really going to like it. And... Uh, you're not going to find it at the hardware store, but there is one internet supplier, I'm not sure of the name, you can uh, do a search on it, that will sell this in small quantities to you. But of course, by the time you pay a cutting charge and a shipping charge 
and uh, an inflated price uh, from a small company you're going to find it quite costly but it's uh, as you recall in one of my videos where I visited that screw machine shop that's all they used there was uh, 12L14 and uh, uh, perhaps if you have a shop like that locally they will sell you some but they will consider you a nuisance hope you found this helpful this is Tubal Cain saying so long for now